I told him we're going to get the FBI uh, out to talk to him. And uh, by the end of the conversation, I had the guy crying. Lemon Squad is about 7,000 inspectors, but the reality is you're, when you talk those core metropolitan areas, that's where, where you know, we, where we do most of our work. Maybe five, 600 inspectors around the country does the majority of the work. And then you've got all these inspectors out these real rural areas that yes, they're on and they might do one or two a year. So the number sounds like we got a lot of inspectors, which we do. But most of them are in metropolitan areas like we are today in Atlanta. We got a lot of inspectors in Atlanta. Lemon Squad looks at about 50,000 cars a year across the country. We look at cars in the lower 48, Canada, Guam, some in Puerto Rico, lots of cars. I would say about 20% 20 to 30% of those cars we look at, we find issues that, that are bad enough to where you wouldn't want to buy the vehicle. We find issues with just about every car we look at. It's real rare that we don't find any issues at all, but most of them are just minor things, maintenance things, things that can be remedied quickly. Out of those 50,000 cars we look at a year, I would say somewhere around 1,000 of those cars don't even exist. They end up being full-on scams. Maybe 20,000 of those cars we look at are cars that we wouldn't recommend purchasing. That leaves us with about 30,000 they're, you know, around there that, that we actually recommend purchasing. There's a lot of times we show up at the address for the vehicle and it ends up being not a dealership. It ends up being a field sometimes with nothing there, just a, a field. We've had customers that have paid for these cars in full before they've even had us go out and look at them only to show up to find out there is no car to look at. One of the things the scammers like to do is they like to find a car on the internet that it's actually for sale and there's pictures, there's some verbiage, and they'll take that and put, put an ad up somewhere else to make it seem like they're selling that car. So most of these scams aren't where someone's making up the dealership. A lot of, you know, and doing it that way. Most of these scammers are just putting them up on normal car sites that are, that are out there for sale and just, just a one-off car. But then there's other types of scammers that are a little bit smarter and a little more tech savvy. They'll make a dealership website, like a Ford website, and they usually pick a dealership that's went out of business. A, a dealership that has a good reputation online, has good reviews, it makes you feel good about the dealership, about that website, and they don't make the prices on the cars so low that it throws tons of red flags. They're just a little bit low. Most of the time, they like to get a down payment. That's what they're looking for, somebody to get come in and get a down payment on a car, and that's where they make the scam, right there with the down payment. But every now and then, they get super lucky. The scammer will always make it sound like there's a whole bunch of people looking at these cars, so that this one car, we've got three people looking at it right now. And, and the guy that wants to buy it, the poor customer, he ends up saying, you know, I'm just going to buy it in full. I'm going to put the whole money, you know, the whole deposit and, and the whole payment down and buy the whole thing right now. And then they decide after that, they want to have us come look at it. And sometimes it's because they've decided they just want to get it looked at. And they think they can get their money back. But a lot of times when they call us at that point, they're already feeling that there's something up. They've stopped returning calls. Red flags are going off and they, they know it's a scam at that point. So they hire us and we get out there and we verify that it's a scam in those cases. There was one time we had a guy who was in his 70s and he used up his whole life savings to purchase a car down in Arizona in a suburb of Phoenix. After he purchased the vehicle, he wanted us to go look at it, just make sure it was okay. We got there and it was a field. There was nothing there to look at. All the money was gone, nothing to show for his money. The scammer got him good on that one. A lot of times we'll have a customer call and it'll be a dealership they want us to look at. Well, we've just already tried to look at that same car five times and we can steer them clear without even going out looking at it. We know it's a scam because we, we've tried to look at cars at this, this dealership that doesn't exist. On our inspections, we use a paint meter. That gives us an idea if the car has been in an accident or had pr previous paint work done. A modern car that's been painted usually has about 4.5 to 5.5 mils of paint on it. So we could start on a corner and work our way around that car. And if we get to a point that has 10 mils, even 15 sometimes, 15 mil we'll see on some cars. And, and if you were to scratch that off a little bit and get in there, it's, it, it is, it's just thick paint. But once it gets up in the high teens and then it, for sure into the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, it's getting thick Bondo in there. And then it'll get so thick, once it usually gets around 40, 50, 60, depending on the paint meter, it'll show an infinite sign, meaning that it's so thick 
that it can't even read through the Bondo. And the only way it's going to get Bondo like that is if it's been in a previous accident. We've had cars where the, they've shoved newspaper into, into the rust holes and smeared a little Bondo over it, but you could still see the newspaper even sticking out and then painted over. So you can push the Bondo, you can push the paint. You, you gotta be careful you don't stick your finger through it. It's so bad. There's been times we go out and look at a vehicle, a classic car, and the most important thing on a classic car is, is the metal. Um, you, you don't want rust, you know, rust and rot. You don't want Bondo hiding the rust and rot. A motor going bad isn't good. A tranny going bad isn't good, but those things are a lot easier and cheaper to fix than, than replacing the metal of the body and the frame. And there's been many, many times we've went out where we used our paint meter and the Bondo was so thick that our paint meter wouldn't read through it. That happens, I would say that happens multiple times a week. Most flood vehicles we look at, they say that the vehicle barely got wet. And it was just a fluke that it had been titled as a flood vehicle because it wasn't enough to do any damage and we get out there. And there's certain things you can look for with a flood vehicle. You can get up underneath the dash. There's some metal that's under the dash that isn't treated. And if water gets on it, it rusts real easy. You get a little glaze of rust. So we can kind of tell if it's gotten up that high. Hinges in the door jams will, will show some rust. And, and there's other things we look for too, but I don't know that we've ever looked at a flood car where they've said it barely got wet. And by the time we got out there and looked at it, everything was wet all the way up to the dash. Levin Squad's been looking at cars for so long and so many cars around the country that there's times where a customer will come to us to place an order and they'll take a dealership that we've been to 20 times to have us go look at, or, or more than 20 times even, and we know it's so bad there, we recommend that they keep looking, that that dealership only sells bad cars. We've looked at cars at a, a dealership that we won't name in Chicago that is so bad. I've heard they've turned themselves around a little bit, but there's we've had a lot of issues at that dealership finding some bad, bad cars. One time we went there to look at a car they normally specialize in higher end sports cars, but this time it was a classic car. And the trunk had about four or five inches worth of water in this old classic car. And they asked us to not tell the customer about that. And if they did, if we did tell the customer about it, they were not gonna allow us back out. We've had lots of dealerships across the country that have offered our inspectors money to give a good report. We obviously, we don't take any type of money from any dealers to, to tell, tell our customer a car is good or bad. We, we tell them the honest truth. One time we had a customer order an inspection from us and this one was taking a little long to look at. The seller was giving us a hard time. And I'd say maybe two, three days into it, our customer called us and said, hey, can, is there somebody there that can go over this report with us? And we said, the report, let's look you up. Sure, we can do that for you. And we looked him up. We, we had to say, hey, we haven't been out there yet. And he said, well, I've got this report from you guys. And I said, well, can we see this report? Can we look at this? And what it was, was that person that supposedly had this car for sale he took our sample report, made a fake report, and gave it to this customer showing how amazing it was. So we had never actually looked at that car. I ended up calling this scammer. He was in Maine, the state of Maine. I remember that. I called him up to talk to him about it, the, the seller that is. I told him we're going to get the FBI out to talk to him. And uh, by the end of the conversation, I had the guy crying. It was, it was pretty good times. Yeah, we saved our customer from getting ripped off on that one. It's a really, really tough industry when it comes to reviews. We had somebody look into our reviews a while back and a lot of our reviews have been left by dealerships, by the salesman who was upset that we didn't give a good report on a car that was bad. And instead of you know looking in the mirror and saying, okay, maybe I should have been honest about the condition of this car, he, he's mad at us for not letting the sale go through because we gave our report to a customer who looked, looked at it and saw that it wasn't a car they should be buying. Bottom line, get the car inspected. We see so many scams out there. Not only do we see bad cars, but we see people just plain old getting ripped off. It's totally fine to buy a car that states away from you, but just get somebody to get out there, get their hands on it, hook up a computer to it, and just make sure it's what it's supposed to be. Premier Financial Services makes it easier and more affordable than you could possibly imagine to own your dream car. Their simple lease is one of the most powerful tools in the world of exotic car financing. You get all the benefits like the tax savings and the low payments of a lease with all the additional benefits that you'd normally find in a traditional finance arrangement. You can build up equity, you can pay it off early, you can trade in and out of cars because you get a very clear and easy to understand amortization table to understand what your payoff will be any month throughout your term. And all the while, the amazing team from Premier Financial Services will be right there to help you along the way. They've been supporters of the VinWiki channel now for five years in a row, so we can't thank them enough for that, but mostly we're thankful for the fact that they can help you make it easier than ever to own your dream car. Check them out now.